The Urantia book tells us that creation is set up on a horizontal plane, and that would be pervaded space, and that unpervaded space or non-pervaded space is the space reservoirs, and they are the equipose of the uh, um, horizontal plane, and uh, when these go in opposite directions during space respiration. Anyway, if we were completely outside, out into nothingness and looking inward, we uh, might see creation as something similar to this, enshrouded by the unqualified absolute. Well, let's open up and take a look inside. Now we can see the outer space levels. There's four of them. And uh, if we were to journey inward, we would notice, first of all, that now this is the master universe. And as we go in, we go to smaller and smaller outer space levels until we get down to the grand universe. And the grand universe includes up to the uh, seven super universes. And then of course we also have the central universe which is uh, inclusive of paradise, Hovona, and uh, the deity presences. So uh, in a nutshell, this is my 3D rendering of uh, creation as explained by the Arantia book. And uh, the book is, is uh, unbelievably incredible and has answered questions uh, that I didn't even know I had. But I want to run a quick tour, show you what I've done in my uh, CAD space, and uh, show you what I've done as far as drawing this uh, creation-wise, as explained. Let's zoom back out real quick and we'll uh, cut through all of creation including the uh, outer space levels and that might help to give an idea also of just how big all of this is. Now with the outer space levels cut open we can uh, get a much better idea of the uh, ratios between these items that the book explains. This would be looking upward. You can see into those space reservoirs and then uh, Notice how the outer space levels get gigantic. Now let's zoom back in and uh, take a look at the grand universe again real quick. And this is pretty much it, the grand universe, central universe. Uh, paradise, of course, is in there and uh, Havona. You can see the dark gravity bodies. Now these dark gravity bodies uh, took a while to figure out what they meant by those, but the outer ones are like a screen. And uh, the inner ones then, of course, are the ones that they say are tubular and kind of coaxial. Let's open those up and take a look. Now with the section taken out of the dark gravity bodies, we can really get a look at how they're set up. The book explains how the inner ones are set up coaxially and uh, there's three systems. Now these are not actually tubes. These, my drawing, uh, I'm using those to represent bodies of two, uh, you know, they're just set up in a tubular uh, kind of a fashion. The outer gravity bodies are like a screen and they're, they must be what keeps the light from getting out of that area. I don't know, but uh, I'm thinking that the the inner dark gravity bodies, I believe they're probably more uh, in control of actual gravity. I don't know, but uh, the outer ones were like a screen, which is pretty cool. So, uh, and notice how they go, whoops, notice how they go up and down and almost to the edges of uh, pervaded space as it grows, as it goes out. We'll take another look here in a second. The Urantia book tells us how uh, there's kind of a quiescent zones of quiet space between the circuits uh, of virtually everything that's in creation. And uh, between the dark gravity bodies is where there's the most unique type of uh, uh, quiescence going on. They say that the area in between these bodies actually kind of moves up and down like a wave. And it's very possible that that might be the mechanism for space respiration. Now, I don't know, but uh, it seems like that could very well be some kind of pump. I uh, don't know. 
but uh, anyway so let's zoom back out a little bit here and uh, do a rotation so we can get a really good look inward and uh, go on in a little rotate back a bit and so we're kind of lined up with that opening now let's go on in to the central universe inside of those dark gravity bodies we have Havona this represents the billion perfect worlds of Havona notice there's seven circuits um, and inside of Havona we have the sacred spheres we have the sacred spheres of the Father the Son and the Spirit now let's take a better look at this and you can see that on the outermost is the sacred spheres of the spirit and the master spirits reside there these red uh, units represent the master spirits and then the next circuit in is the uh, sacred spheres of the sun that's where the light comes from I guess for Havona the central universe the actual light comes from the sun uh, spheres and then there's the father spheres the sacred spheres of the father inside and you notice this is paradise of course in the middle and uh, I've got kind of a skin over it right now but I wanted to show you the supreme power directors they are on peripheral paradise now let's get paradise out of the way or open it up anyway now with paradise uh, opened up so we can see better in there let's go in a little bit closer here and take a look and uh, you notice in the center there of paradise now if this were paradise uh, the center would be of course the father at the center and uh, let's get this moved up here to where we can line up with that but now if the father were in the center we still couldn't see him because the eternal son shrouds him and then the eternal son is shrouded by the spirit infinite spirit and the infinite spirit is the only one that we would actually be able to see I would think uh, because of the way that's set up let's take a look inside now once again the uh, enshrouding is done in such a way that we will never be able to see actually inside and uh, so as far as this CAD system goes if we were to kind of zoom in let's pan this over and kind of center up but uh, it might be something like that the father is right in the middle of all things everything and he's enshrouded by the sun and uh, the sun is enshrouded by the infinite spirit now uh, as far as the Trinity goes yes they're on the most upper part of paradise and if we go underneath paradise another paradise you can see that there's those zones cover those in a minute but let's get back up here and uh, notice the regions that are on upper paradise now they tell us that the Trinity is there of course and then also that the most holy sphere they call it just outside of the uh, infinite spirit is where the most holy sphere is and that's mostly for worship and and uh, what not and then you get on out into the father's mansions there's seven of those and they pretty much encircle paradise and apparently right now with all the tr all the entities and all of creation only uses a couple of percent of this which is pretty incredible but the way I've got it drawn here there's seven you notice concentric rings and that would represent the father's mansions the holy land these areas out here uh, kind of bubbled out of the last uh, holy land area uh, for me represents those exhibition halls that they tell us about uh, you know and gives us information uh, about our Michael sons so let's rotate this down a little bit and once again you can see that we have the uh, supreme power directors out there at peripheral paradise seven of those they uh, control the um, super universe that's on the opposite side of them but yet they get their control and energy from the master spirit which is uh, pretty cool now as far as nether paradise goes uh, they explain the Arantia book explains that there's these zones right underneath paradise the bottom nether paradise and that in the center they call it the zone of infinity and the next zone out is an unnamed unknown zone a total mystery I guess and then we have a zone that has to do with space potential and then space force and energy 
and then the unqualified absolute. So, although I highly doubt that it looks anything like this, this this is just to show kind of the different regions and things, and uh, the book ex explains it in such a way that I was able to draw this, and it took a long time, it took a lot of reading over and over to understand this to that point where I could actually draw it like this. Now, of course, I've turned everything off except the grand universe right now, but uh, you can see the super universes out there, and uh, I think we should go take a look at Orvantan, our super universe. So let's back up a little bit from Paradise and Havona, the central and divine universe, get back outside the dark gravity bodies, and then to the seven super universe level, the super universe level. So now we'll open up Orvantan. Now I've uh, opened Orvantan, and you notice these red oval areas in there. And remember, please, that uh, these ovals, like these super universes and whatnot, they're, they don't have edges like that. Of course, they're feathered, and the density gets less and less. Uh, but I, I'm doing this to try to give an understanding uh, of the regions mainly that they're talking about. Now, the super universe of Orvantan has 10 major sectors, and uh, we, of course, are in one of those major sectors, and I'm going to turn the others off. Now we can see Splandon, which is the major sector that we're in, and we can also now see the architectural worlds uh, of Orvantan. We can see the capital, which is Uversa. We can see the seven advanced spiritual training worlds. Let's zoom in a little bit here. And around each one of those uh, adva excuse me, advanced uh, spiritual training worlds, there's 70 specialized worlds. I guess they could be class worlds, uh, not sure. But uh, that is our last stop before we head to uh, Havona. But uh, anyway, back to the uh, major sector, Splandon. Let's open that. Now we can see all of the minor sectors that are in a major sector. Uh, the book tells us that there's a hundred uh, minor sectors in each major sector. Let's window into that, take a look. And of course we're in one of those minor sectors and the one we're in is called ENSA. Uh, but we'll get to that in a minute. So let's get the other minor sectors out of the way. Now we can see the architectural worlds that are uh, part of the Splandon system. We can see the capital, which is U Major the Fifth. Let's zoom in a little bit. Uh, U, uh, U Major the Fifth, they call it. And then, uh, now this uh, uh, sector here is kind of in the way, but that would be the capital, U Major the Fifth. And it has 70 super use, su <laughs> excuse me, super universe uh, intellectual training worlds. So uh, we'll be going there. Now let's uh, open up this uh, minor sector, ANSA. Now with ANSA open, we can see the local universes that are in it. Now uh, they say that uh, a minor sector has a hundred local universes. The local universes are uh, products, creations, of the Michael Sons. If we window in here, we can kind of get an idea. Now, once again, remember that these are just regions. They're not actually shaped like that, but these are just to kind of define regions. So let's come back out a little bit, and then we'll uh, we'll go ahead and open up our local universe, which is uh, Nebadon. Now we can see the capital of Ansa, which is. U minor the third, and uh, it has seven worlds around it, which are uh, the higher physical studies of ascendant life worlds, and uh, another one of the areas that we'll be going to. That's cool. We get to go to a lot of places. So let's pan over a little bit and get over to Nebadon and zoom in, or let's window in and check out Nebadon. Now you see all these green ovals in there and those are representing constellations. Okay, they tell us that there's a hundred constellations in a local universe. 
just as there's a hundred local universes in a minor sector and a hundred minor sectors in a major sector, but only ten major sectors in uh, a super universe. But now this is kind of out looking towards paradise. Uh, I just wanted to show you that before I actually show you uh, our constellation. Let's remove the others. Now with the other constellations out of the way, we can see ours, which is Norlatia deck, and then we can also see the capital of Nebadon, which is Salvington. And you notice the worlds around Salvington. They are the ten universities with seven each class worlds uh, for a total of a, a lot. 490, I believe it is. But uh, we'll be going through those worlds also. Zoom in a little bit. And uh, that's where we'll be going. So let's go ahead and open up Norlatia deck then. And now we see the 100 systems that are in a constellation. Uh, there's a uh, hundred of them, and ours is in there amongst those. Let's get those out of the way. With the other local systems out of the way, we can now see the capital of our uh, constellation, Norlatia deck, which is Edentia. And Edentia has 70 worlds around it, and they have to do with socializing and uh, cultural training. But uh, we'll be going there after we leave our system, our local system. But first, we need to check our local system. Now, with Satania opened up, we can see the capital of it, which is Jerusalem. And around Jerusalem are the transition worlds. And around the transition worlds are, of course, the mansion worlds. Let's rotate this around where we can get a better view. Uh, let me zoom out a little bit first and uh, do a quick window. I'm going to rotate this so that those areas those don't get in our way. So if we bring this around this way, uh, we'll be able to view it a little better. And if you notice, Here's those transition worlds, the blue, and the white ones around those are the mansion worlds. So we'll be going to those. And that's the capital of our local system, Satania, Jerusalem. Now before we get to Jerusalem, though, we have to live our life out here. Now this is representing our sun, okay? And I have nine planets around there. You can see there's a lot of uh, planets. Uh, there's a lot of systems. Uh, I guess there's a thousand uh, solar systems in a local system and one out of every ten of the planets is either inhabited or inhabitable. I think that's correct. Now let's go ahead and turn off all these other solar systems and we'll check out ours, Monmatia. So now we can see Monmatia, our solar system. Uh, the Arantia book uh, says it's called Monmatia. Uh, and of course that's from their language. Now let's zoom out a little bit and take a quick review. Our solar system, Monmatia. We're in the local system of Satania. It's capital Jerusalem. And we're in the constellation Norlatia deck. It's capital Edentia and we are in the local universe of Nebadon. Its capital is Salvington, which is in the minor sector of Ensa, and its capital is U minor the third. And then we are in the major sector of Splandon, which has its capital U major the fifth. And then we get to the uni super universe level where we have the capital Uversa. Now, that's just one seventh of the grand universe, uh, but it's incredible. So, that's the grand universe. Now, if we go ahead and do a little rotation here, 
we can get it reoriented to where we can see from our vantage point. So once again, we're in this little area here in the big scheme of things. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn those areas off so we can see just the architectural worlds. Now that we can see all of the architectural worlds, let's go ahead and zoom in so that we can uh, once again, whoops, once again uh, get to the point, uh, get our vantage point. Got to find us here. Kind of difficult sometimes. Uh, it's a big area in 3D space, but uh, we're slowly getting there and. Uh, there we are. So, Mon Mesha, that's our sun. Third planet would be Earth. Now, let's go ahead and uh, bring this down a little bit and put our solar system in the middle of our vantage point. And let's back up just a little bit and rotate. And we'll be able to see all of the architectural worlds. Now, uh, <laughs> the vantage point is a little obscured and that's why we can't see a lot. First of all we have to look through our galaxy and then Orvantan and the other side uh, is where everything kind of is as far as paradise and all that. But let's go ahead and uh, zoom in up in here and see if we can just get a, a vantage point. Actually what we need to do is rotate it again a little bit and uh, we can window in and that way we can get a little bit of a better perspective on it and uh, the thing is the scales are so incredible on this uh, when we go way out to where we are we're so tiny you can see us out in here and there's Uversa of course but uh, We've got the unqualified absolute and the uh, outer space levels turned off. I'm going to window in here into the central universe and the, excuse me then let's go ahead and turn on the unqualified absolute and the outer space levels. So here again in its totality other than being sliced in half is creation modeled on this CAD system to kind of explain what the book is explaining to us as far as how creation is designed and set up and uh, it makes sense it's all uh, designed after a paradise pattern and it's funny how when you get into the atom you realize that the total of creation is so similar to the simplest the atom and once again then we're zooming out to see the whole unit, the master universe, and uh, once again it is enshrouded by the unqualified absolute. You have the space reservoirs and uh, you have the seven super universes. The total is the master universe. The seven super universes are the grand universe. And the grand universe, as its nucleus, has the central universe, the divine and central universe, where the residency of God is, the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. So I hope this helped, un helped, helped you understand what the book is trying to explain. Uh, if it does help, I'm so glad because uh, it sure helped me. I see in pictures, I think in pictures, uh, and I've been drawing pictures most of my life, and I've been using computer-aided design and solid modeling for many years. So this is my solid modeling rendition of the Master Universe, as explained by the Urantia book the fifth epical revelation.
I hope this helped you. Thank you so much.